If you have never heard of Anatolia in Turkey, after this video you will never forget it. Why? This is why. Taste the world-famous pistachio baklava, listen to the rhythm of copper smiths and explore the Zugma Mosaic Museum in the city of Gaziantep. Witness the evolution of religion in the Gabaklite excavation site, the oldest temple found so far. Visit the beehive houses of Haran before exploring Şanlıurfa city. Walk in the narrow streets of Mardin. Visit an active Assyriac monastery. See the second longest city walls in the world surrounding the old city of Diyarbakir. Enjoy the breathtaking views of Hevzal Gardens by the River Tigris recently listed by UNESCO. Before we get into the details of each location, we will show you the organization of the trip and the places we visited. With our first destination defined, Gaziantep, we took the plane in Lisbon with a stop in Istanbul. After a short stop, we resume our journey towards Gaziantep, which would be the first place to visit in southeastern Anatolia. After two days of visiting the city and tasting the delicious local food, we took a bus to the next city, Şanlıurfa. We saw the Abraham Pool, bazaars, madrasas, the Gabaklite excavation site, and much more. But the most beautiful city was yet to come, Mardin. It was also by bus that we went from Şanlıurfa to Mardin. Mardin. Well, you'll see in the pictures. We spent three days there. Finally, we took a taxi and headed to Diyarbakir, where we saw the second largest wall in the world in the plains of the Tigris River. And by the way, it would be very nice if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, to see more videos about wonderful destinations like this one. It would be a big help. If you're looking for a city that's both cosmopolitan and easy to get around in, Gaziantep is definitely the place for you. With its wide range of restaurants, shops, and attractions, all within easy reach, you're sure to have a great time no matter what you decide to do. Famous for its cuisine, Gaziantep is a top gastronomic destination. In fact, Gaziantep's food is so remarkable that it's been recognized by UNESCO. Some sources even call Gaziantep the food capital of the world. There are about 200 pastry shops in the city that produce Gaziantep's baklava and other regional desserts. For many visitors, eating these delights is the main focus of their stay. In addition to the food topic, you'll find the world's largest mosaic museum, the Gaziantep Zugma Mosaic Museum, which is one of the most renowned collections of mosaics in the world. The museum, which debuted in 2011, features a collection of mosaics found during the excavation of the nearby archaeological site of Belka Zugma. Some of the pieces on display are rightly regarded by experts as among the best surviving examples of Roman mosaic work in the world. Situated on the mountaintop at the heart of Gaziantep, the century-old Gaziantep castle was initially built as an observation area by the Hittite Empire and turned by the Roman Empire as a castle. Now the castle serves as the Gaziantep Defense and Heroism Panoramic Museum, showcasing the struggle and heroism of Gaziantep soldiers and people. At the entrance to the castle, we find the 14 Martyrs Monument, which was built in memory of 14 children killed by the French soldiers who occupied Antep during the national struggle. Also not to miss is the Coppersmith Bazaar. Walk around the bazaar and watch the craftsmen engraving, welding, hammering, and sharpening copper items. Unlike other bazaars, like the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul, the shopkeepers didn't hassle us as we walked from shop to shop. As in any Turkish city, you shouldn't pass up the chance to stroll around the streets, some of which are narrower and others bigger, some of which are busier and others less so, but all of which have that intense allure and distinctive charm of this nation. After a few enjoyable days in this city, we went aboard the bus that would take us to Şanlıurfa. Less than two hours are needed for the approximately 150 km excursion. The trip is quite nice and costs less than 12 euros. Said to be the city of prophets, where the prophet Abraham was born and began his monotheistic teachings, Şanlıurfa is one of Turkey's great pilgrimage cities. As well as Urfa's central district, 
crammed with historical things to do, including the sacred carp pools of Golbaz and an archaeology museum that ranks among one of the best in Turkey, there are many ruins scattered across the surrounding countryside. The main tourist attraction for visitors today is the archaeological site of Gabaklaip, just on the city's outskirts, where humanity may have first begun religious belief. If you want to know more about Şanlıurfa, check out our Şanlıurfa video on the channel. So let's dive into a brief travel experience in Şanlıurfa. And we couldn't start better than visiting the world's earliest temple at Gabaklaip. Although the ruins themselves are scant, the importance of this site for our understanding of human history cannot be overstated. When excavations began here in the mid-1990s, archaeologists discovered what is believed to be the world's oldest religious temple site. The Neolithic pillars, carved with depictions of animals, have been dated to about 10,000 BC, helping archaeology's understanding of Neolithic culture. Back to the city, and right in the center of the city is the Golbaz area, a well-tended park where Şanlıurfa's most important tourist attractions lie. The sacred fish ponds are surrounded by the beautiful Uxvenie Vekf Mosque and Medriz complex on their north side, and the Haylailer Rahman Mosque to their west. Swimming in the ponds are hundreds of sacred carp, which play a central role in the story of the Prophet Abraham. Next, let's dig into history at Sanlurfa Archaeology Museum. Over three levels, this contemporary museum weaves the story of human habitation in this region from the Neolithic to the Ottoman era. The museum's highlights are the exhibits devoted to Gabaklaip, and the many other pre-pottery Neolithic archaeological sites scattered through the nearby countryside. One of the collection's key pieces is the Urfa Man statue, considered the world's earliest life-size representation of a human and thought to date back to around 9,000 before the Common Era. In the Golbaz area, near the sacred carp pool, we went to visit the pilgrimage sites of the Derga complex. Just to the west, across a central courtyard, is the regal facade of the Mevlidi Halil Mosque. This is an important pilgrimage site for the faithful, and once a year, just before the Hajj to Mecca, pilgrims gather here to seek blessings. In the central city, the 12th century Grand Mosque represents the major historical changes in Sanlurfa and how certain buildings and sites have been rebuilt and reused across the centuries. The western side of the building boasts an unusual octagonal minaret, probably retained from the church. Also, take a look at the impressive Kizilkuyun necropolis as 133 rock tombs some 2,000 years old when the city was called Edessa. There are also Roman tombs, reliefs, and mosaics. The bazaar is one of the most well-liked places to go. The smells of spice, leather and cooked meat from the kebab vendors blend together in the narrow, cramped lanes. Everything from cheap clothing and plastic household items to handcrafted leather goods, antiques, and exquisite workmanship may be found here, lots of gold. It's a terrific spot to lose track of time and take in the ambience for a few hours. We stayed in this city for a few wonderful days before boarding the bus to Martin. The roughly 150-kilometer journey takes less than two hours. The journey was reasonably priced at less than 12 euros. The city of Mardin is located on the slope of a hill looking down south to the Mesopotamian plains. Mardin is on the main routes connecting Turkey to Syria and Iraq. Mardin is one of the few cities in the world wherein the entire city has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is because just about every inch of the city oozes history and culture, and is arguably one of Turkey's most beautiful cities. So when you go what should you see? Here are a few of the sites in Mardin waiting for you when you visit. First of all, let's see how the city is organized. Mardin has a single central street, Cumhuriyet Jadisi, which cuts through the entire old city. As you'd probably guess, this is where you're going to find numerous landmarks in addition to restaurants and local shops. Starting with the Zinkuriye Madrasa, this Islamic theological college was founded in 1385 by Isa Bey. As well as being one of Mardin's best preserved buildings, it's noted for the stunning views from its rooftop that swoop over the entire town and out to the Mesopotamian plains below. The complex is comprised of a domed mosque, a mausoleum, and two tranquil inner courtyards. In the southernmost part of town, the Kazmiye Madrasa 15th century madrasa complex consists of a theological college and domed mosque. The entire complex has a peaceful atmosphere, with its buildings set around graceful courtyards. Upstairs, you can explore the rooms where students once studied and lived while learning the Quran. Was closed at the time we visited. On the way to the Ulu Mosque, you certainly pass the bazaar. 
Mardin's Bazaar area spills down the slope, off the main street of Jumhuriyat Jadasi. This neighborhood of narrow cobblestone alleys linked by staircases is where you come to soak up the bustling heart of this ancient town. As many of the lanes can't be accessed by cars, donkeys are still used for transport by some traders here, and you'll spy them, often touting tasseled harnesses, pulling carts to haul goods. Tucked into the eastern edge of the bazaar neighborhood is the Ulu Kami, Grand Mosque, built in the 11th century by the Artaka dynasty. The minaret, with its unique stone carvings, and the vast courtyard, is the highlight of a visit here. The building suffered badly during a Kurdish uprising in 1832, and today the interior prayer room, divided into three sections, is rather plain. A church that you won't want to miss visiting is the Forty Martyrs Church. This 4th century church still holds services every Sunday, which tourists are welcome to attend. If you're not here on Sunday, the church is open daily for visits. Although small, the interior holds some beautiful icons and paintings that are definitely worth a peek. Martin's Museum is set in one of the town's grandest 19th century villas, which was once the headquarters of the Syriac Catholic Patriarchate. The well-curated collection inside may be small but it highlights the vast history of Anatolia's southeast region. In particular, the displays of Assyrian and Bronze Age pottery are excellent. Martin Post Office is one of the town's finest examples of its 19th century villa architecture, and probably one of the most ornate post office buildings you'll ever see. Today, the main section of the building has been beautifully restored and opened to the public as a historical site, with the actual post office only taking up a small space on the ground floor. For most people, the main staircase that leads from the ground floor up to the first floor terraces, and the views from those terraces, are the main reason to visit. Martin Castle towers above town on a rocky crag. You can't actually enter the castle area currently, since the castle has been used as a military base as part of a NATO agreement. Anyway, you can climb towards it using the steep path that leads up to the fortress starting from the Zincuria Medrizesi. Despite the city being an authentic museum, there are a number of sites outside the city that are worth seeing. We advise visiting the Deir el Zafarin Monastery Complex and the ancient Roman city of Dara. We arranged the trip with a local taxi and it went well. The problem is always communication, as most people don't speak English. However, the sympathy of the people overcomes this limitation. The Deir el Zafarin Monastery Complex, 20 kilometers southeast of Mardin, contains three churches, which adjoin the rear facade of the arcaded courtyard all surrounded by high fortress-like walls. The building originally dates from the 5th century but has been destroyed twice, first by the Persians and then by Tamerlane. Don't miss the underground sanctuary chamber and the chapel side room with its 300-year-old wooden throne and floor mosaics. The ancient Roman city of Dara, 40 kilometers southeast of Mardin, is one of southeast Turkey's hidden attractions. The Dara Mesopotamia ruins do not often appear in tourism brochures of Turkey despite their importance in the historical world. The city was a strong fortress for the Romans and was one of the significant trade centers of Mesopotamia in ancient times. The ruins of the ancient city of Dara, featuring ancient rock tombs dating back to the 5th century A.D., have been compared to the famed city of Ephesus in Aegean Turkey, earning it the nickname the Ephesus of Mesopotamia, the breadbasket of the ancient Near East. After spending a few very enjoyable days exploring this lovely city, we took a taxi to Diyarbakir. It is a little over 20 euros for a journey of roughly 90 kilometers. The journey takes an hour and 20 minutes. When we went to Deir el Zafarin Monastery, we immediately negotiated the price to contemplate the trip to Diyarbakir. Diyarbakir is Turkey's largest and oldest Kurdish-majority city. 
The city has the UNESCO World Cultural Heritage List, Diyarbakir Castle, and Hevzal Gardens, as well as the world's second longest wall, after the Great Wall of China. Without further ado, let's take a look at the places that impressed us the most during our short two-day stay in the city. The most famous feature of Diyarbakir is the UNESCO protected fortress and walls of the old city. They are assumed to have been built by the first inhabitants of Diyarbakir, the Hurrians. There are four important gates of entry to the fortified city. The wall has 82 watchtowers and 63 inscriptions. But Diyarbakir has a lot more points of interest. One of them is Ulu Kami. Ulu Kami dates back to the pagan period. As it is one of the first mosques in Anatolia, it has an important place in Islamic history. The architectural structure and the reliefs on the door are worth seeing. When visiting Diyarbakir, you should also take note of the other mosques in addition to Ulu Kami. Let's look at those. The Hevzal Gardens, are the 700 hectares of cultivated, fertile lands near the river Tigris, between the Diyarbakir fortress and the river. The gardens became a World Heritage Site in 2015, along with the walls of Diyarbakir fortress. Remember to take some time to unwind at the Dekal Bridge. The bridge is located 3 kilometers outside of Martin Gate, 3 kilometers south of the city. The bridge has 10 arches of different sizes and is 178 meters long. The Dekal Bridge is a historic bridge in Diyarbakir over the river Tigris. It was constructed by the Marwanids between 1065 to 1067. Hassan Pasahan is the place to go if you need to schedule a meeting with someone. This 16th century caravanserai that has been rebuilt across from the Ulu Kami is home to carpet stores and jewelry stores and is the ideal place for a leisurely breakfast. Additionally, live music is frequently promoted. The welcoming Kamer Avlu Cafe downstairs is maintained by a group that promotes women's rights in Eastern Turkey. Look it up. Another place worth visiting is the house where our famous poet Jahid Stk Tarank was born and spent his childhood years. It was built in 1733. The house, which has all the features of Diyarbakir's traditional residential architecture and consists of four wings arranged around a central courtyard, was built entirely using basalt stone with a floor plus one floor. In addition to visiting historical sites and landmarks, it is necessary to walk through the streets and observe the people in order to gain a basic understanding of the people's culture. These are scenes from everyday life that we will show you. With these pictures of Diyarbakir, we say goodbye to Southeast Anatolia and Turkey, confident that we will return because there is still so much to see. If you are unfamiliar with this amazing region of Turkey, take advantage of it while there are few tourists. And by the way, it would be very nice if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, to see more videos about wonderful destinations like this one. It would be a big help.